every year there's a new Call of Duty, and when a new battlefield hits, everyone gets excited. The first person shooter genre is arguably the premier genre for video gaming. Which begs the question, do gamers enjoy violence? And if they do, what does that mean exactly? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today at Game Ranks, we want to ask the question, why are war and conflict such a big part of video games? When the video game industry became what it is today during the late 80s and early 90s, it was all about plumbers and hedgehogs. The most violent thing you would see was jumping on top of a robot or a mushroom and having it squish them or let an animal out. Now certainly there had been violent games before, plenty of medieval RPGs had come out with sword fighting and death, and at the same time there were a whole lot of military games as well. But they never really looked that realistic, and it all kind of felt cartoony, so did it matter? Matter? Not a whole lot. When those games came out in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, people were much more focused on violent films, because that would be where you would see a much more graphic depiction of violence than a silly little pixel explosion or a blocky line that kind of resembles a sword not actually hitting another enemy. But as graphics developed, suddenly people turned their attention towards games. Parents, and therefore politicians looking for points with parents, suddenly became very concerned about what was happening on their kids' new favorite toy. But it wasn't just movies that were violent before games. Books are often filled with very graphic descriptions of violence. And why is that? Because violence is a conflict, and stories need a conflict. Now some people might argue that it is in some way lazy to rely on violence as a conflict, but the fact is, violence is a very human thing. The further back in history you go, the more violent we are. Go back to the Wild West. Go back to frontier times. Go back to medieval times. The further back you go, the less it took to escalate into a fight or even a war. Violence is an intrinsic human problem, and while a lot of video games are most certainly celebrating violence, usually the best ones, the ones that we like the most, are the ones that are recognizing it as a problem. Sure, games like Metal Gear Solid are kind of a power fantasy in one way, but in another, it was also one of the first places I heard as a child back in 1998 about nuclear proliferation. Often the message is not about violence. The message is about how violence is bad. But then if you think about it a little bit further, that conflicts with the entire reason for the game. You're playing the game to indulge in some violence. Which then asks, are we making the argument that we are somehow not as evolved as we think we are? Or that civilization is kind of pretending or playing at the idea that humans are not violent? You see, I don't agree with any of those viewpoints. People are not predatory apes. People are animals, but they're not the same kind of animals as other animals. We have the ability to cognitively recognize our flaws and develop upon them. That being said, yes, it's interesting that we don't drift away from the idea that we need to have violent media, but at the same time, it's kind of erasing all of our history and erasing all of the things going on in the world currently. Do I think that's the right way to do that stuff? No. Do I think a lot of our video games and media contain that stuff because it's still going on? Yes. To be utterly and completely honest with you, I am a very non-violent person. I am very much against violence. I am an anti-war individual. But when I sit down and I think, well, should we just not have violent video games? I can't come up with a good reason why removing that from our art, which yes, video games are art. I can't come up with an argument that says to me, art isn't a reflection of what's going on in the world. And really that's what it comes down to. A violent video game doesn't make a person violent. In a non-violent person, it causes them to recognize specific things about the world. The first being that violence isn't done. It's not gone. It's still here. It's never stopped. Like thinking that it's gone or stopped and that now we can stop making video games that are like this, it's not honest. It's not not the world. Do I think that violent video games are taking non-violent people and changing them into violent people? No. That's a ridiculous argument. Another big reason why war and murder and violence and all that is in video games is because it allows people to deal with the fact that this stuff is still going on in the world. When I think about that stuff, I'm like, wow, I really wish I could do something. But here's the problem. I can't. I have nothing to contribute to any of that. I can't give a stern talking to to 
some dictator who keeps his people behind walls and imposes fascist rules and laws upon them and violently attacks anybody who doesn't agree. I can't do that. No one can do that. But how do we deal with this crap? Well, in some ways, being able to engage with it in a safe environment, in a video game, in a virtual world, in a place that doesn't actually exist, with actions that don't actually create consequences, allows you a means to feel as though you have actually at least put up some sort of mental resistance to it. In many ways, one could call it cathartic. It makes you feel like you have done something that you can't do, which is fight back. Violent video games are around for the same reason a Quentin Tarantino movie is around. Did the Jews kill Hitler in a movie theater? No. But holy shit, that was cathartic. Because you know that you can't go back in time and change that stuff. And you know that you wouldn't have actually legitimately done what they did. But you also know that if somebody had done something to Hitler, and somebody had put a stop to him earlier, things would be very different. It's a murky moral area. It's not clean. Because most people would probably not do any of the things present in these games in real life. And not just because they're afraid to, but because they don't consider it right. But even putting aside the psychological element of it, would you play a game called Paint the Fence if the goal was to cover the fence in paint and then revel in the painted fence? I don't think you would. I sure wouldn't. This is why something called conflict is so necessary. In order to meet a goal, one has to overcome adversity. Oh, and by the way, if you consider painting a fence adversity, congratulations, you're eight. Conflict has to exist in a story for the story to matter. In many ways, we often define our greatest achievements by the conflicts that preceded them, that enabled them, that created them. And yes, oftentimes those conflicts are violent. They aren't always, but without some degree of conflict or violence or both, what are you really trying to achieve? And I'm not trying to tell you that puzzle games are bad or anything. They are absolutely one of my addictions. But even in that, there is some degree of conflict, though it may not be narrative conflict. Conflict, there's a timer. And while that's not the same thing as what we're talking about in this video, imagine if a puzzle game didn't have a timer or a goal. There has to be something there. There has to be a reason to proceed, an obstacle to overcome. Otherwise, what are you really even doing? Especially as games become bigger and more artistic and more exploratory and more wide in their ideas. If there isn't some reason to rise to the occasion, then what's the occasion? And again, Yes, violence is often that. Violence is such a huge motivator of action in our world. We're often fighting for what we believe in, standing up for people who can't stand up for themselves. the hell out of that guy, huh? And to pretend that these conflicts are not necessary in any kind of art, any kind of narrative structure, any story, it's, it's bonkers. I'm not saying that every single game has to be violent or aggressive, but I'm saying pretending that gaming or any art form shouldn't have it is ridiculous. They do have to have some sort of conflict, and without it, what's the point? What do you think? I have a feeling that most of us have a pretty intense opinion on this matter, and I'd love to discuss it with you in the comments. If you happen to enjoy this video though, clicking the like button is certainly a good way to show it. And if you're not subscribed to Game Ranks, now is the best time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week, and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. As always, we thank you so much for watching this video, and we will see you again next time right here on Game Ranks.